Hey everybody, this is Daniel at Guideline Geo again. Uh, today I'm going to highlight the differences between an Easy Locator HDR and an Easy Locator HDR Pro. And by the way, go Cowboys. We have an Easy Locator Pro on the left and a regular Easy Locator on the right. So now we will start both of these instruments up. Power buttons are the same. The difference between the two, the big difference, they are the same frequency, 450 megahertz. But as you can see, they're different body styles. With the easy locator, regular easy locator, you, there's an ability to add smaller tires to the body. As you can see, here, right on the side there is where they would go, uh, the axles would go in and you could have the smaller tires. Uh, power buttons are the same on the antenna themselves. The regular Easy Locator <coughs> is in a RTC cart and the HDR Pro is in a new Pro cart. So I'm going to turn the monitors on. The other thing to highlight with this pro cart is the battery compartment. The battery compartments on these two different carts, uh, they're a little bit different. So with the pro cart, you're able to have four batteries inside. They're a mold for it. They connect directly here. Uh, but on the side here, you'll notice there is a charging port, so you can charge all four batteries within the cart. With the rough terrain cart, you have the battery bag and there are four batteries that can fit inside, but you would need to charge each battery individually. So upon startup, we can see the starting screens are both different. So we will start with the regular Easy Locator first. On startup, you're immediately taken to a blank radar gram with the MALA logo. Uh, and what you have here are very simple tools. So this instrument is made for a locator that's going out to paint out utilities, locate the utilities, mark them. Uh, that's it, basically. There's no uh, way to save your files. There isn't a GPS on it, although there are upgrades uh, to get GPS markers on this system. So basically, you pretty much push start. Uh, in the settings menu, you have which cart you're using, and in this case, we're using a rough terrain cart, uh, and we are pushing forward. You can change your soil type, and your uh, backlight, and your color palette. If we go into system parameters, it gives us basic, basic uh, system settings there. You know, if you wanna use Imperial or Standard, meaning uh, feet or meters, uh, a language, your date, your time, different software uh, where you can upgrade your software, restore set factory settings. Uh, your time gain can be on manual or auto and your default zoom depth, meaning this is the depth you see when you start the survey. So our default depth right now is at 9.64 feet. Uh, if you had GPS active, this is where you would go to see those coordinates. Uh, if we go into options, this is where you activate your screenshots or your GPS option. So now we're back at the start screen. Um, what we would do here is we would push start, we would collect data. We can go into a full screen mode uh, we also have a noise filter and a contrast filter. And since we are on auto gain, we do not have the time gain function below this uh, contrast. Now we're going to look at the HDR Pro. On startup, we're brought to a projects menu, uh, the traditional 2D project, which the Easy Locator, that's all it is able to do. We have a 3D grid project we could, we could run, and we have an object mapper project we could run. 
Also, we could look at the positioning of the GPS because it, become, it comes standard on the Pro system. Also, we're able to look at files. So if we go into files, we can see all the files we've collected. Uh, we can open them up and look at these files, go into full screen, apply filters. Uh, I can quit out of that. Or I can upload them to a USB stick to do some post-processing. If I go into the 2D project, uh, it looks similar to the regular Easy Locator. Uh, what's going to be different, the settings menu looks a little bit different. The depth here is your depth on full screen. So on full screen, uh, if we can see down, if the soil conditions allow us to see down to 18 feet, uh, that's what's showing up on the full screen uh, mode. Uh, we change our time gain, which you can do on the regular Easy Locator as well, as long, uh, along with velocity. Uh, this is different on the Pro, changing your acquisition mode. Uh, you can change it to time, wheel, or a keyboard trigger. Right now we're using the Pro Cart, so we can use a rough terrain cart as well. And we can change our point interval. You can't change your point interval on the regular Easy Locator. If we go into acquisition parameters, we're able to calibrate new wheels or new encoder wheels we want to use. Uh, we could be pulling the system, we could be using a rough terrain cart, and we want to make sure that that wheel is calibrated for this instrument. Under display parameters, you have your pallet, uh, trace view, so when you're collecting data, you can actually see that first arrival signature and your backlight uh, function. So we have it 100% right now. If we exit out of that and act like we're going to collect data, uh, this is different than the regular Easy Locator system. Uh, we're able to put markers. This comes standard. So actually on the regular Easy Locator, you can opt to get a software package that allows you to have GPS markers. And what that allows you to do is mark on the top of the data where you see a hyperbola or a pipe uh, and a GPS, uh, GPS is tagged to that marker within this system. On this system is standard. Uh, so you would mark your surface object where you would you, you see on the surface here, this is where you see your object. Or you can do an object marker, which you go into the data and actually mark the object within the data. Sometimes these uh, markers become a lot on the screen and it's hard to see what's on the screen and you can just hide them and then you come back out. In the tools section, you can set your soil velocity manually, or you can do a hyperbola fitting. Now, on the regular Easy Locator, you are able to do hyperbola fitting once you start a survey. There it is right there. What that'll allow you to do is uh, calibrate your depth, your estimated depth, based on the hyperbolas you're seeing. And you can do that here as well with the hyperbola fitting. Uh, migration allows you to take the hyperbolas you're seeing and kind of bring them to a point where it's not an actual hyperbola, but it matches the, uh, the soil velocity exactly to get you to an exact point uh, where you're seeing just a point and not actual hyperbolas. And then you can set your zero level as well, which is going to change uh, the depth here. And you can bring it up or you can bring it down. It just depends on how you want to look at data. As I stated before, GPS comes standard on the Pro system. Now you are able to upgrade the regular Easy Locator uh, to have GPS on it, but right now you, you don't see it. And what you don't see is there's a little circle that should be here with a crosshair through it. Uh, on this one, you don't see it, but over here on the Pro, you see it's right there. And it changes between three colors, red, yellow, and green. Red obviously saying that you might see one or two satellites. Uh, yellow saying you're getting about half of them. And green would be the ideal condition for the GPS. Okay, next we're gonna look at 3D grid projects, uh, which is standard on the Pro system. It's not standard on the regular Easy Locator. Like I mentioned before, the regular Easy Locator is used primarily for just painting and marking 
uh, utilities that you locate. Now, where we would use a 3D grid project, say we're in a city center, there's a lot of uh, pipes in the ground, we're getting a lot of hyperbolas in the data. We could run a 3D grid project and that would help us see in a 3D image what's in the ground. So if we click on it, we're able to determine the size of the grid we want to run. Uh, we have a point interval, which uh, is how fast we're collecting data. And then we have line spacing, which is what line, the spacing between the lines on the X and the Y axis. Now, if we, you're able to put who the customer is, operator, your site, and any comments uh, that go along with this project as well. If we start the project, here we see our grid that we've determined, all the lines we're gonna run, uh, the parameters, and we have a start and a cancel. So again, I'm not gonna run a, a full project here, just kind of give you an overview of, of what happens. So I push start. It takes me to my first line on the X axis. I push start line and I start to push. And as I'm pushing, you can see it's tracking how far I'm going. Now I'm gonna finish this line out just to show you what it does. So we're getting close to the end of the line. All right, it sees that we finished the line and it asks us, do we wanna start the next line? Or we could redo this line entirely if we didn't walk a straight path. Uh, we would do that for the rest of the X axis and then the grid would switch and the lines would be going this way for the Y axis. We would collect all of those lines. So we're collecting in a crisscross pattern. We're going up and then we're going across. And what that allows us to do is when we're done, we would stop and process. And it would take one to two minutes to process the data. And then you're, you're shown a 3D image over here and then you're shown your 2D data here. And what you're able to do is go down in time into the slices and you start to see images develop. If there's a pipe there, or something you're looking there for there, uh, you would see it within this project. Right on the screen, it does all the processing here. Uh, you can export this data into uh, post-processing as well. All right, the next project we could do it, or run is a object mapper project. What object mapper allows you to do is upload data to a Google map and mark those utilities based on GPS coordinates uh, on the Google map exactly where it is. Now, with an object mapper project, you can run the project, but you need a separate software uh, to actually post-process the data, and, and that's at a separate cost. But you're able to run the project. There is a 15-day free trial on the Guideline Geo website, and you can see if it's something you wanna use. Uh, I think it's pretty cool. Uh, I've used it before and, and I think it's a, a really good tool to have. Now with Object Mapper, if we go into it, we go into settings, uh, we can see our depth, we can change our time gain, soil velocity, point interval, uh, all of the basic things you would see in a 2D project as well. If we go to a new project, it's going to ask us to name the project. So I'm going to just put a simple name in here. And we can use GPS, which I would recommend, but if you do not have GPS, you can use a baseline. Uh, and again, this would take a whole nother video to explain the baseline and how to do that. Uh, I like using GPS. Now you can use the GPS on the instrument itself, which is that black puck there, but it's highly recommended to use a third party GPS. If you want to be very accurate, say centimeter, centimeter accuracy, you would use a third party GPS. So just for the sake of this demo, I'm going to say we have GPS, which we do, uh, start the project. And then I'm going to start my profile. Now it looks, takes me to a 2D scan. I'm going to push. I know there's some utilities right outside this door. So there I see some utilities. 
So now I can either stop or I can turn around and remember, we're going to be marking this on a Google map. So now this is GPS uh, tagged, right? This hyperbola, this set of utilities has a GPS tag at the exact spot I went over it. So what I typically would do is push stop. I'm still in the project. I would turn around, maybe uh, go down a couple of feet because what I'm trying to do is collect data that's going to be uploaded into a Google map. So I want to have different data spots that are along a path that shows it on the Google map. So I would click start profile again. Now, as you can see, I'm a little bit uh, about 10 feet over. Uh, start seeing the utilities again. So now again, it has GPS coordinates tagged to this utility here. I'm going to push stop. And at this point, I would just keep, I would keep doing it. Um, I would either go down 10 feet that way or three feet that way, however long I want to do it. Uh, and then I would stop the project. Uh, and then that would be it. Then my project would be saved under files. There are my two object mapper data files. I would upload those to a USB stick and I would go to my computer and post process on the object mapper software. Okay, so basic overview, your Easy Locator HDR on the left is primarily used for marking out utilities. Uh, there are upgrade options to have GPS markers on it, uh, but it is a basic system used just for marking utilities. If you want to do some post-processing, 3D grid objects, and a little bit more tools to use in the field, the pro system would be the way to go, and that is the system on your right. Uh, thank you guys for watching this video. If you have any comments, uh, any questions, please feel free to ask and uh, have a good day.